Hello, students of human anatomy at Miracosta College. Hi, welcome to your hybrid course where I will be recording and presenting lectures online, but I will also see you in the lab in real life on Tuesdays and Thursday mornings. So that'll be nice. Hello. Hi, everybody. Um, I guess I will get to know you better when I really meet you. But for now, my name is Grace Gates. I'm a doctor, I'm a former ob -GYN. And when I teach the course, I will definitely have a very clinical take on the material because that's where my training has been. Um, I have taught at the UCSD School of Medicine for the last 13 years. I still teach there. Uh, I've also taught microbiology at another community college. And this is new to me. I'm teaching anatomy this semester. So I will show you the lecture and let's begin. Go to the lecture. So I will try to keep the lecture format very consistent for you. I think that helps me when things are consistent to learn. And what do I mean by that? Well, I will have the lecture that I'm giving. Lecture one, intro to anatomy. Uh, then the text that I took the material from, which in this case is Martini's Human Anatomy, the required textbook for this course. Doesn't mean that you have to buy it. You can rent it. Eighth or ninth edition. And it's going to be the first chapter, which is Intro to Anatomy. Then, to help you learn anatomy, I'll also have you coloring pictures in Wynne Caput's Anatomy Coloring Book, fourth edition. This is a much less expensive book. It's like $25. You can get it on Amazon. You can get an ebook. Um, and the material for this lecture came from the first section, which is called Orientation of the Body. And then these are the pages one, two, three, four, five, six, 14 that pertain. I would recommend that you do all of these. Then the way that the book is set up is that as you look at the book, the right hand side has the coloring uh, that you're going to do, and the left hand side has the text that explains. The text is really good. Okay. After I got through my year of anatomy, first year of medical school, uh, generally, if I needed to look up anatomy, uh, any questions about anatomy, I could look in the anatomy coloring book and there was enough information in there for me to be able to answer my question. So even though it's very short text, uh, it's very good and to the point. So always read the text on the back of the prior page. Okay. So, all right. All right, first three slides are the learning objectives, one to 16. The way that I have the lecture organized, I march through answering the learning objectives, okay? And in the corner over here is a little key that tells you the learning objective that this slide answers or fulfills. Okay, so first of all, you're asked to define some terms. So um, one of them is anatomy, which is this course, which is the study of the structures of the body. And then there's a whole other course that you guys have to take called physiology, which is the study of the function of the structures of the body. So what's a structure? A structure is a complex anatomical part of a living thing. It's a little bit of a vague definition. It's because it's very wide. A structure could be a little tiny organelle, little bitsy little structure inside a cell, or it could be a structure like your skull. So it's just a very wide definition, a complex anatomical part of a living thing. 
function is how something works okay how does it work that's it okay then i'll explain why i have this picture over here in the next slide okay so what is the relationship between structure and function in a body well they're very tightly associated with each other during evolution over a billion years the structures of the body developed if the way that they functioned was a good answer to the problems in the environment. So structure and function evolve together over time. And specific anatomical structures allow the body to perform specific functions, right? If you have something you need to do, you have to have a structure in your body in order to be able to do it. Or you can't do it. <laughs> okay, so this is a picture of an elbow, or at least part of an elbow over here. This is an elbow joint. Okay, so how does that work? How does an elbow work? Oops. Okay. Well, this is the arm bone, the upper arm. Okay, so this is like the upper arm bone anatomical name, the humerus. And this is the forearm bone. Anatomical name, the ulna. Actually, it's one of the forearm bones. There are two. The other bone isn't shown in this picture. All right. So this shows that there's a structure on the upper arm bone, the humerus called the trochlea, shaped sort of like a spool of thread or a little barrel, a little rounded structure here, rounded. Okay. And that fits into this cupped structure here called the trochlear notch, okay? And the way they fit together allows us to move our elbow. Okay, it allows us to move the elbow joint so that the elbow joint can bend and straighten or flex, extend. <laughs> okay, and it's the shape of the trochlea matched up with the shape of the trochlear notch that allows that easy bending at the elbow to take place. So this is an example of structure and function and how they're associated with each other. <clears throat> 